Data transformation can be a long and challenging process, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I will show you five built-in functions I use to simplify process of data transformation and stuff like, so stay tuned. One of the most commonly used data type is JSON. In Snowflake, we can use parseJSON function to convert a JSON formatted string into a variant data type. For example, if you have a column containing JSON strings, then you can use this function to parse these strings into a variant. And by the way, a variant is a special data type that can contain any kind of data, so it can be used in multiple different ways. Once converted, you can then use uh, variant-specific functions like flatten or reconstruct to query and manipulate the data further. This includes accessing nested fields, querying arrays, or modifying JSON objects. Converting nested data structures into a separate rows, making it easier to query and analyze the data, is a typical example of data transformation process. In Snowflake, this process can be achieved with flatten table function, which is, you won't guess, to flatten arrays or objects within a table. Flatten is used when working with arrays, variant columns, or semi-structured data like JSON converting them into a relational format. On top of that, with lateral join, you can actually join these values with other datasets in the same query. For example, you can imagine we have two sales records. In each record, quantity of sold products is held in array, and our goal is to hold this information into separate records. In cases like this, the easiest would be to use flatten function with lateral join. That's why they are usually used together. Split functions are widely used to perform simple data transformation, not only in Snowflake. But in this case, we can distinguish three similar split functions. If you have a string data type containing comma separate values like apple, banana and orange, you can use the split function to split the string into an array of individual fruit names. Let's run it. So it will look something like this. In case you want to extract only some part of the data based on the previous example, let's say you only want to uh, get bananas from this. Let's use the split part functions and we'll choose the second element of the array to get only the bananas. And now let's say you want every fruit in a separate record. So it, uh, it's the typical example when we want to split the array into a separate rows. That's, that's a really common example. So in this case, you would need the split to table function. So let's run this one. And as you can see, based on the comma delimiter, we receive those three values in separate rows. Imagine that in your ETL, you want to create a brand new table based on a particular file. Unfortunately, this file has a lot of columns and you are not familiar with data structure. So analyzing it will probably take you a lot of time. You could work on this manually or use infer schema snowflake function, which automatically infer the schema of semi-structured data and generate a schema description on the fly based on the observed structure. It works perfectly with other functions like generate column description or object construct. So next time, in case you want to check the schema of your file before loading into a table, or create a new one based on the file, keep in mind there is such function so you don't have to do it manually. E 
if you're already using inverse schema function in Snowflake, but getting a simple schema from a file is not enough for you, then it's time for generate column description. This function is using input from inverse schema and transform it into a single row containing a column name and the data type as a string in the same way you would need to define it while creating a new table. So you can use it for documentation purposes or even go one step further and use it as an input to create a table from template. So in one SQL, you can actually read a schema from a file, staged internally or externally, and then use it to create a table. So with adaptation of this approach, evolving data structures shouldn't be a much problem anymore. Overall, table functions in Snowflake provide a powerful tool for solving a wide range of data transformation problems. As in this video, I've shown you only five different functions, there's definitely much more of them. So let me know in the comments below which other functions or techniques you use during data transformations. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.